I'm meeting with the only whistleblower to resign from the police over the grooming gang's cover-up. When 2004, um, I was approached and asked to join, um, to go on board with um, a job that became known as Operation Augusta. And this was looking, we had a young, a little girl who had died in Rochdale, who had been groomed, sexually abused. I was asked to go on an investigation to look at whether we had a problem in Greater Manchester with uh, young white children being groomed and sexually abused by gangs of Pakistani men. Greater Manchester did have a problem with grooming gangs. The little girl who died, Victoria Agoglia, was 15 years old when in 2003 she was groomed by a rape gang and then killed by a heroin overdose given to her by an abuser. We had dozens of young, very vulnerable children who were mainly in care, well they were all living in care, um, who were being systematically groomed um, and raped by gangs of Pakistani men. Over 18 months, Maggie and her team compiled a compelling case against the gangs they knew were operating in Rochdale. But she had to take a break from the investigation when her husband fell terminally ill. And at that point, we had a um, hundred paedophiles um, on a database that we knew were raping children. We had about three dozen children that we had identified as being um, abused. So that job was a full singing and dancing major investigation. You know, my job was done and I went off work uh, content and, and happy to know that those men were going to be prosecuted. But when Maggie returned from compassionate leave after the death of her husband, she found that Operation Augusta had been closed down. None of the abusers were convicted. I couldn't get any answers. All I was told was that there was insufficient evidence to prosecute. And I knew, because I had been working on that job from day one, I knew we had the evidence. The last information placed on the police database for the operation was on the 6th of July 2005, one day before the 7-7 terror attacks in London. There was a gold level meeting within GMP, and that means the most senior officers in GMP, that they had a meeting and that the decision was made at that meeting that they were not prepared to put resources into that investigation. Was it shut down because revealing the grooming gangs just after an Islamist attack was considered too incendiary? We'll never know, because those minutes were conveniently lost. Years later, Maggie was brought back in for a new operation to tackle the gangs. I was re-approached in 2010 and asked to go on board a case in Rochdale, which became known as Operation Span. Maggie was asked to join the team to gain the trust of a young girl called Ruby, who aged just 12, had been raped by known paedophile Adil Khan. When she was just 13, she had been made pregnant by that man. And the police at the time, which had been two years previous to that, had seized a foetus. But despite having the frozen foetus and the DNA needed to prove the identity of Ruby's rapist, Adil Khan was not charged with rape. Ruby, you know, we had a foetus. We knew who had made her pregnant, but the authorities failed to protect her. The schools knew, social services knew, the police knew. And even though we all knew, even though we had DNA, even though we knew who was responsible, that man was still never charged with rape. 